Morning, my friends. It's a humid, dreary day here, stormy. As you can hear, the crows are very active. There's a robin's nest directly in front of me, and I can't see whether it still has any inhabitants or not. When the robins were building it, I said, I told them, uh, this is a bad idea, it's a sycamore tree, which means the leaves are rather far apart. If I can see it, so can the crows. Um, so I don't know if that's what they're jazz, what the crows are jazzed about this morning or not, but I hope there's not a sad loss of Robin life this morning. On that cherry note, you know, I, I, uh, recently got this pen. It is a Graystack celluloid faceted pen, Visconti pen made for Cursani. Uh, Stilograph Garsani. Those of you who follow me know that I'm very fond of, of Stefano, who runs the shop, and Patrizia, who helps him out, and uh, the service for from um, Stilograph Garsani is great. So I'm always happy um, when I can get one of their special editions, especially when it's uh, mounted on a, a pen I love, and I am very fond of Visconti's. I've, I've kind of moved away from Visconti's. I say that, and I just bought two of them. But um, but my journey with Visconti is kind of my journey into upper level pens, and it it really so I want to talk okay so I want to talk today about Visconti celluloids and um, how beautiful they are and which ones I have and why I like them and it really uh, it really started with this pen the Wall Street which was um, my first acquisition of what I would call a grail pen, a pen that I thought I'd never be able to afford. I thought it was incredibly beautiful. Um, it wasn't at the time, this is 15 or 20 years ago, it wasn't at the time really hard to find, 15 years ago, I suppose. Uh, but it was, um, it was way above what I was able to pay for pens at the time. And I, ended up, I was very active on pen trace at the time, and I ended up finding one used for a price that I could afford. And as you see, some of the later iterations did not have the celluloid section. This one does, it's got an ink window. Uh, it doesn't have a hook safe lock, it's got a, a screw in lock. I've let the silver bits patina because I think that looks really cool. Um, red, at one time I had a blue one too, but that was during my period of over indul of indulging in buying pens that um, my budget really couldn't stand, and so I ended up having to sell one of them, and I sold the blue one. A um, little bit of schmutz there on my pen. I anyway, it it's just it's it's a gorgeous pen, and though I honestly I haven't inked it and used it in years, it's still one that I'm very proud to have in my collection because I think it it remains a classic and desirable pen. Now, at the time that I got this, I was mostly into vintage pens. Um, I was buying Phil K.O. pens, more or less collecting Phil K.O. pens, and I had just started collecting Bexley pens, but those were, generally speaking, the only modern pens I was much interested in. Um, I was much more interested in vintage pens, particularly Waterman pens. But one of the things that I liked about this pen is that the celluloid was not just like, but it was reminiscent of the celluloids on Parker Vacumatics um, without some of the issues of Parker Vacumatics, which is their, I couldn't service them myself. I had to send them away to be serviced. I mean, I couldn't service this myself either, but it doesn't have all the, um, ver it, it's, it's, would it be, whatever. Let me back up. The main thing with Parker Vacumatics is that if you got one with really great clarity like this, that looked like this, um, you had to pay a premium that I just was not prepared to pay. So mostly what I had in the way of Vacumatics were ones that had lost their transparency or weren't particularly beautiful, but I still really liked the style and the idea of them. So. <clears throat> for a vintage pen user, this was a great pen. It was 
huge compared to most vintage pens. Uh, it's really about the size of a of a uh, classic Waterman Patrician, which was a pretty big pen for its day. Um, and it had great clarity and beauty and all of those things that the Vacumatic had going for it, if you could get one in a really good form. By the way, I got a few years ago, I was a, a friend's father died and he had worked for Parker Pens and she gave me this stash of pristine pens. They'd never been inked. Many of them didn't have nibs in them, so they were really parts. And I sent them to someone to um, source nibs for and put together and I never got them back. And that is a very sad tale in my pen collecting story, but I digress. All right, so it started my, my um, jump into uh, to higher price pens started with this pen, but it's just stayed with that pen for quite a while. And then, um, but I always like Visconti's. Uh, so one pen that I'd had my eye on for a long time uh, when it first came out was the, from the moment it first came out, was the Divina in Desert Springs. Actually, it was the, the first Davina uh, in the kind of burly sort of uh, celluloid material, but I never did acquire one of those. Eventually, um, it came out in this material, which remains one of my favorite celluloids on the planet. Um, generally, it's called uh, Desert, Desert Springs, Desert something. Um, slightly different changes in the name according to the pen model, but this is modeled on a Davina shape. Um, later, it was issued with an ink window that was um, slightly bulging and didn't have the silver furniture in it. So this is an earlier model. You don't see these particularly often. This was my first experience with the hook safe uh, closure system, which I thought was really cool, but I kind of don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I think it's very cool, but I don't find it a particularly secure way to um, close the pen. I have often, um, I have often had a, a Visconti uh, leak in a pocket. So, but it's um, the material is be, without a doubt gorgeous. And I did um, early in my Visconti days. I think this is a. Yeah, this is an 18 karat nib. I have the, um, I had a couple of 14s, but I mostly had 18 and then I kind of, when I got more serious about being able to buy Visconti's, yeah, that was the, the palladium years and people go back and forth about whether they like palladium nibs or not. I like them. Yes, I've had pens that were hard starting and had baby bottom and needed some tweaking, but when they're tuned, I find the palladium nibs just fabulous. So um, another celluloid from Visconti that I thought was absolutely terrific is this Wild West celluloid. It first, or speaky, this is the Wild West from Chatterley Pens, another exclusive from a, a company I like a lot. And um, I think it first appeared on the Speakeasy, which has a little tiny vial in it that you can put some booze in. And it's a that's a pretty neat concept of a pen, but uh, I just think this material is great. Actually, I think one of the errors I made in my pen collecting is I had a chance at one time to buy an old one in Arco Bronze for a really good price, well under a thousand dollars. And I was had it in my hand, was ready to buy it, and then I looked over and I saw the old one in this material. And at that time, the only thing I knew of that was in that material was the Speakeasy. And I thought, oh, I'm never going to see this again. And I got that and. And actually, since then, Arco's gone through the roof and I would now have to pay easily. If I could find one, I would have to easily pay twice what I was on the verge of getting one for. But anyway, so I have an old one in this material too. But it's, I just think it's really beautiful. There's a slight bit of sparkle in it. And, and one thing to remember is that these celluloid materials, um, they have the depth and all of that kind of stuff and and these celluloids are not being made anymore all that but uh these are also materials that were developed well before um, we started seeing people um, 
like Jonathan Brooks and, um, uh, I don't know, can't remember the guy from Dreamcast, but people who started, who start Mike McKenzie, who started working with uh, developing acrylics that also had play of color like this or like this, um, that also um, found ways, particularly Diamond Cast, to add some sparkle to their pens, that sort of thing. So it's a, uh, these older pens, when they came out in a flashy color like this, it was really pretty exciting. All right, uh, by the way, I have another limited edition from Chatterley in that material, which is just so gorgeous to me. But what really brings me to talk about these today is I now have a almost complete set of celluloids from Corsani. Um, I believe they, this was before I, I knew of Corsani, but I believe they started with a Homo sapiens model in gray celluloid. And they had a break in where a number of those were stolen, I believe, so they're really hard to come by. Um, uh, but now I have at least one of each color in Corsani limited editions. So I've got the gray, which is the most recent, the blue Sonia, Sonia blue, which uh, came out uh, just last fall, the red one and the green one. The Sonia blue is the only one that's not faceted, and that's because the rod stock was too narrow to create facets. So rather than not do a blue pen at all, um, Stefano decided to do uh, this model and it's I love it actually it's interesting it's a little bit thinner than than most of the pens I use but it just feels nice and of course it's got a really really um, wonderful nib on it so not much in the way of real information here except a little bit of history of my collection and uh, an opportunity to look at these Visconti celluloids together so I'll put a couple of close-ups and call it a day and uh, leave the crows to the porch.